what's up guys? I'm here with my friend Martin Duramoto. You might recognize him from some of the vlogs. He leads the tours and sometimes he raises his front wheel. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to take this opportunity. So NGK recently reached out to me to do a collab. And so I wanted to do a video as a sort of introduction to motorcycle spark plugs for dummies. That is specifically myself, who don't know anything, but want to know more about basically motorcycle spark plugs, what they do, and how to take care of them, and when to know how to replace them. So we'll ask Martin, who knows a lot more than I do about motorcycles and life in general, despite his youthful what do spark plugs basically do in the engine? Right, so you could think of an engine like um, a pump, right? It mm -hmm. pumps in air and fuel and it pumps out the exhaust, right? Okay. But in order to turn fuel into usable power, mm -hmm. it needs to ignite. It needs right. to create that heat, right? Yeah. That, that explosion. Um, and spark plugs basically act as that um, tool that ignites that mixture so that you could have good combustion, produce good power, and put more power down to the wheel. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So, no spark plug, no kaboom, no rev, no happiness. The end. No wheelies. <laughs> so, luckily for us these days, spark plugs, especially motorcycle spark plugs, aren't nearly as complicated and need as much attention as they used to because we have ECUs, EFI, and oxygen sensors. So. Basically these days, what you just need to know is that spark plugs are consumable goods. Yeah. You need to replace them every so often. So what would you say are some symptoms of like, you might need to change your spark plugs without even having to look at them yet? Right, so if you wanna just go by feel, typically you'll feel a bit of stuttering or like sputtering, sorry, with the engine. Like as you're riding, you'll feel it like go like this a little bit and you're like, that kind of feels strange, right? Um, that's usually the, um, I guess the most frequent symptom that people feel. Um, but apart from this, you'll, you'll also notice poorer fuel economy. Um, you'll also have less power because, again, you're not igniting the combustion as properly as it should be. So you're not producing as much power. You could check a lot of things in your bike um, and see like the air filter if it's causing any of that. But more often than not, it's the spark plug and that will tell you like it's got to go. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I think uh, a conventional nickel or copper spark plug would be something like eight to 10,000 kilometers? Yeah, more or less. And as you go to the more premium kinds of metals, it, it goes a bit further. Like I think some iridium spark plugs are able to last up to 20,000 kilometers. Yeah, that's right. So we'll discuss later whether or not you can or should upgrade. But that's kind of the basic knowledge. So when you go for your 10,000 kilometer checkup, whether or not your motorcycle feels funny in the ways that Martin described, it's good for you to have a look at your spark plugs. So here we have a brand new Iridium IX spark plug. It's really important when it comes to your motorcycles, that you only use the ones that spec for your motorcycle. That's actually not that hard to figure out because on the NGK website, they have a part finder where you can see the exact model and the exact part number for the spark plug you need. So that's super important. Don't use a spark plug. That's not for a motorcycle. It's going to cause a lot of nasty problems if you do that. So anyway, let's have a look at what a brand new Iridium spark plug looks like. Right, so here we've opened the box and what's interesting is that you may not see the part number outside of the box, but where, oh, it's actually typically down here, not anywhere else, but inside you'll also find it on the spark plug itself over here. The, hey, just, the part number is usually up. there. And so you'll know it's brand new because it looks very shiny. Um, the threads don't have any oil, you know, the, the tipping is still really, really pristine. Um, and yeah, that's generally what it looks like. So they all come in different shapes and sizes and you'll just need to pay attention to the part number to make sure you're getting the right one for your motorcycle. Importantly, make sure you're using genuine NGK products. These are just some of the ways you can tell genuine from counterfeit spark plugs. Using counterfeit spark plugs will cause many problems. So we can compare the brand new to my spark plug. So right now my engine is running great. So I'm not expecting to find any problems with my spark plug, but Martin's gonna show us how to take it out of the interceptor and then we'll see what it looks like. What I have here is a specific spark plug um, socket. Mm -hmm. And so what it has is this rubber thing inside. Um, and if you see the, the rubber piece inside, what that does is it actually grips the top end of the spark plug. So once you loosen it, you won't have to like put your hands in there and to fish it out. You just remove the entire thing and the spark plug comes with it. Yeah. So yeah. what's the danger with kind of mishandling a spark plug? Wow. <laughs> 
you don't want to mess with the spark plug. I mean, <laughs> it's part of the engine. So like if you strip the threads, that, that gives you quite a big headache because you'll need to like redo the threads of your engine. So you don't want to do anything bad. You want to just take your time, take it easy, be gentle, um, and don't force yourself if it doesn't feel right. With spark plugs, as in life, be gentle. <laughs> yeah, so the good thing with the interceptor specifically, um, spark plugs are right there, super easy. Later, we'll show you a different example, but for my bike, show us how easy it is to access. Right, so typically you'll see this uh, spark plug wire come here and go to the cap, and then it will go into the side of the engine, at least for the interceptor. So it is actually quite easy. You just have to remove it. So you just typically pull it out. So one big pull. <clears throat> there um, and then you can see that the spark plug is in there so that's what I mean it's a little bit it's a little bit deep inside um, but the next thing you'll want to do is just put your tool in um, just make sure you get a good grip of it there and then slowly but gently twist it out so you see that it, it didn't fight so much that means you don't need a lot of torque to take it out um, and now that it's loose you can just take your time and bring it out and then I'll do this by hand. And then soon this should be out. There's a lot of twisting here. So now that we've cracked it loose, um, for some reason it won't stick to the tool, but it's right here anyway. So we can just pull this thing out and there we have the spark plug. So we see that this is a used spark plug. Um, and it has gone through quite a few thousand kilometers, which is why it looks worn versus our brand new spark plug, which was a lot cleaner, a lot shinier, but this still works pretty well. So if you look at it, it still looks pretty healthy, no excess fouling um, that we see here. So this means it can go for another few thousand kilometers before it would need um, a change. The new spark plug that NGK sent me is quite different from the spark plug currently installed. And so, Martin and I were wondering which is the correct one because again, it's super important that even if the thread fits, if you don't have the spark plug with the correct projection or length, it's going to cause you problems. If it's too short, it's not going to ignite enough. If it's too long, it could hit the piston, which you can imagine is really not good. So let's yeah. have a look at the difference of the two spark plugs. The spark plugs here, are relatively similar in, in some ways, right? So if you look at the spark plug gap, the gap is pretty much the same. Um, the threads are also at the same pitch, but the big difference here is really the length. Um, and what, what this does, like as Aaron mentioned earlier, is that if it's too short, you won't have good combustion. If it's too long, um, you, will, you will also not have good combustion. And at worst case, your piston could might, it could slap on the top of the spark plug, which could cause some engine damage. Um, so given this, we want to always stick to what the manufacturer recommends. Um, and given that we verified that this specific part number from this spark plug is the right one, we will just go ahead and put this back in. Now, we don't want to force ourselves to use this kind of plug, um, which is shorter because this will cause even worse problems for your engine. We verified that the, the same specification of this plug to the NGK would be CR7EIX, but this one is CR7HIX. So that difference between E and H tells us the difference of the height. So, so if you look at these part numbers, these different numbers and letters tell you a whole bunch of things about the plug. It tells you the heat rating, it tells you the size of the thread, the pitch of the thread, the size of the hex here, as well as the, the materials as well. Um, so you want to make sure that you're getting the one that is specified for your motorcycle and stick to that because if you change it out, you don't know what kind of problems you'll be running into. Now we're basically installing slash reinstalling the spark plug. So can you tell us why it's really important to do it properly? Right. So if you, if you could look in this part of the engine, um, that, that's exactly where the spark plug goes, right? And the threads um, have its own um, threads as well there. So you don't want to over tighten this um, because if you do over tighten it, you could destroy the threads in there. Um, sometimes you might destroy the threads here, but 
in general, um, what happens is that you actually destroy the threads in there. So you don't want that to happen because that's a major pain. Yeah, you don't want to mess with anything in the engine. Yeah, exactly. So that would require you to take your engine apart and like maybe change it out or re-thread the whole engine, which is a huge pain. Yeah. <laughs> so you just want to do this right. It's better to under-tighten it than to over-tighten it. Of course, the right tightness is probably the best, which we'll talk about in a bit and how to estimate that. Um, but yeah, so how, we, how exactly we're going to do this is we're just going to do it the opposite way as earlier. So we're just going to put this back in very, very carefully, shoot it into the hole. Um, and you want to do this first by hand. Like, Don't put any of the tools in first because you want to make sure that it threads in properly. So we'll just make sure it has a good grip there. And then we'll slowly thread it in properly. And you don't want to put too much force here. You don't want to use a tool because you don't want to cross thread this. So we'll do it slowly. And I think the plug is in. So, yep, the plug is firmly in. Now we just got to bring it in all the way. OK. And so this is a two cylinder motorcycle. So that means we have two spark plugs. One here and one on the other side. OK. So we've got it finger tight, which is where you want it at the start. So you want it, you can't move it anymore with your hand. And then next, you'll get your wrench tool. And generally, when you tighten it, you only want to tighten it about one fourth of a turn. Um, actually, even less, maybe one eighth of a turn to one fourth of a turn. So we're going to bring this wrench from here to about here. And that's going to be it. So we'll just tighten it. Ooh, actually, even less. So there. Yeah, it looks That's like it. just about <laughs> one eighth. You got to be gentle. Yep. Remember, be gentle. Don't force it. Yeah, so while you're here, um, sometimes you may want to clean this up because you don't know if some dirt may have gone in there. But this seems relatively clean inside, so I think we'll just leave it as is. Then we'll just pop it back up and then push it in. It's and a then... satisfying shot. Mm -hmm. Now we're good. Now let's talk about what it would look like if your spark plugs did need changing. So can you talk about what we're looking at here? Yeah, so what we're seeing here are spark plugs that are dry fouled here and wet fouled here. So fouling basically means that um, it has worn itself from poor air fuel mixtures. And what that means is that it, it will render itself useless. You gotta change these out if you see your spark plugs look like these. How does this differ from what we've seen earlier, right? So when, if you remember, when we opened up the interceptor, um, we saw the spark plug was a little bit brown um, versus these two, um, which are very deep black colors. Um, with the dry fouling, you'll typically see it to be a little bit um, dry here in the middle. Um, and again, a lot of carbon deposits that you might see here. With the wet fouling, you'll see it to be a little bit shiny. Yeah, it looks slick. With the dry fouling, um, this typically happens when you have a clogged air filter. Or for example, if you have um, a poor, poorly specced out spark plug, meaning like your heat rating is wrong. It could be that it's too long or too short, like as we've seen earlier. So here, what we have here is the wet fouled spark plug. Um, the wet fouled spark plug basically shows a bit of shine. So you'll see some sheen here. This is typically caused by a bit of gas that stays on the plug because you're running a bit too rich or a bit of oil where there could be some oil leak going into your engine. Ooh. Yeah, so that's a little, this, so once you take it out and you see it to be a, a wet fouled, you might want to check those two things, either the tuning of your bike or whether or not you have a leak. But typically these two things can also happen, again, as I've mentioned, is if you have a poorly spec spark plug. So if you have the wrong rating, if you have the wrong length, or if anything related to your air and fuel is also uh, messed up. Like for example, if your spark, if your air filter is a bit too uh, dirty, or it could be a, a wrong specification of an air filter, or if your fueling is out of tune, like if you have a carbureted engine, you might need to get that tuned. Or if you have a fuel injected engine, you might need to get your fuel uh, lines or fuel injectors cleaned. Is it caused by a problem or a problem in the engine? Or is it something that the spark plug is the cause of the problem? Or it depends when you look at spark plugs that are fouled? It's generally hard to say. Um, but 
you will see with that with your spark plugs, they are rated to last a number of kilometers. Okay. So I think once you've hit that rating, like let's say if it's designed to last 20,000 and it's already hit 20,000, then you know it's the spark plug that has caused that. Right. But if it's premature, let's say it's rated to last 20,000, but like 5,000 kilometers in, you're feeling a bit of sputtering with the engine, you're getting poor fuel economy, and when you take it out, it looks like either of these two, then you know something is wrong with the motorcycle, you'll need to have your bike checked just to be sure. Okay, that's great info, guys. And so this is probably usually the problem you'll find most often with your spark plugs, but there are some other examples which I will show you on screen now so that if you have these problems, just change your spark plugs. Okay, so we've covered how to inspect and reinstall the spark plug on the interceptor, but note that it's not equally easy for every motorcycle. So now let's take a look at the XSR 700. Right, so if you look at the XSR 700 here, Unlike the interceptor where you saw the plug go in here, um, the spark plugs are actually inside here. So it's kind of hard to see. Um, but what this generally tells us is that if you want to replace your plug here, you'll have to remove the tank, which makes it very difficult. And so this is when you might want to consider going up from a less, uh, from a, from a standard type of plating on your spark plug to a more premium type. So if you have a bike like this where it's gonna be difficult to access, you might want like an iridium spark plug where it will last around 20,000 kilometers and this will give you some peace of mind. Like you, once you do it, once you remove the tank and you change the spark plugs, you won't have to go through all that effort um, for the next 20,000 kilometers. Speaking of which, now's the perfect time to talk about upgrading your spark plugs and what the difference is between your standard nickel, your G-Power Platinum from NGK, and your Iridium IX from NGK. So most of our motorcycles actually come with NGK equipment out of the factory. I think they're the biggest spark plug yeah. manufacturer in the world. So when it comes to platinum, you're going to talk about maybe, is it 50%? No, maybe twice as much mileage yeah. as a typical spark plug? Uh, well, if you, platinum, you're- Platinum between okay. nickel and platinum. Yeah, with, I think between nickel and platinum, you get about double. Um, and you will notice like a little bit of an improvement as well with fuel economy, with a, a bit also with power. Yeah. But the biggest difference is really going to be the, the longevity. Right, so just better ignitability and better longevity. Mm. And when we move up to Iridium, we're basically getting, so Iridium is going to be six times higher melting point and six times harder than Platinum. So it would be kind of the same benefits, but to a higher degree, would that be correct? Yeah, yeah, so you're, you're again, you're just getting more of the same, right? So you're just getting more and more as you go up for, from nickel right. all the way to Iridium, Iridium. yeah. Okay, so, Cool, definitely see if your motorcycle comes with nickel spark plug stock, then it's definitely worth looking into whether you can get a platinum or iridium upgrade, mostly for just the convenience, the peace of mind, and a little bit of extra performance in fuel economy. Yeah, exactly. So like, we know that the XSR700 comes with iridium spark plug stock. I'm not so sure about your interceptor, but um, what that tells us is that you probably just want to stick to iridium yeah. because again, it's hard to get to. Yeah. So it might be you know, beneficial for you and your effort to just stay with iridium. Yeah. For the interceptor where it's a little bit easier to access, you could go to like a nickel spark plug or a platinum. However, you know, it is easy to access. So if you really do want to change it out, it's, it's really easy, you just need like 15 minutes of your time. No need to remove the tank. Yeah. Yeah, but like if you do upgrade to an Iridium, you just won't need to think about it, right? Yeah. So you put an Iridium there, 15, 20,000 kilometers, you're not thinking about it. And that's, that's like worth a bit of money in my opinion. Yeah, and so it's a really important reminder that Scotty Kilmer did in his video about spark plugs. If your stock spark plug is platinum, never go below platinum down to nickel. If your stock spark plug is iridium, never go below iridium down to platinum or nickel. So just either stay with the stock or a higher kind of spark plug. Okay guys, so that about wraps it up for this video. I really enjoyed, I really learned a lot. Thank you so much, Martin, for your time, for sharing your knowledge. Thank you so much to NGK for the collab and encouraging me 
to make this video. So again, if you're interested in learning more about spark plugs and finding the right spark plug for your motorcycle, I suggest you go to the NGK website for your region and use their super easy to use parts finder to find the right spark plug for you, whether that's the nickel, the G-Power Platinum, or their Iridium IX. They also make the laser Iridium and laser platinum ones, which are even more specialized. You can read up on that if you want. But anyway, hope this helped. I enjoyed a lot. Thanks so much for watching and well, till the next motorcycle adventure, more fun, more wheelies, more spark in your life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>